In this example, I want to make an AI who waits in front of those doors until they open, and when they do, he should pass to the other side and wait here. Uh, okay, so for that, I've prepared this simple blueprint of doors. They inherit from base switchable actor, which is also pretty simple actor with just two events to enable and disable it. It has one variable to keep track of its state and event dispatcher to notify whenever it, its state changes. So the doors, they override those events. So first they play an animation. And when the animation ends, they enable or disable itself. In level blueprint, I've made a debug function. So when I press E as a player, the doors should open. And when I press it again, they should close. So let me demonstrate it. When I press E once, they open. And when I press it again, they close. OK, now let's make a simple path for AI. So one point in front of the, door, in front of the doors and the second one uh, behind them. I'll, I will, uh, I'll drag from this point to create a new one. And let me also disable uh, previous path points. Because once AI reaches this point, I don't want it to ever go back to this point. OK, let me drag an AI. And this is uh, AI from implementation example. So it has nothing inside of it, just this component. Let's assign it to this point when I press the game. As you can see, it's trying to force itself to the doors, even to they're closed. So we need to tell it somehow to wait until they open. And for that, we will use condition on this point to make this point allowed, enabled, only if doors are open. And for that, we will use condi condition query. So let's create a new query. But the problem is that we don't have condition for checking the doors. So we need to create it. So for now, let's save this condition. And let's create a new one. Uh, based on blueprint class, and that will be the task condition. OK, let's inherit from this class. I will name it task count check travel actor. OK, in here we will need two variables, one to which actor to check. And the second variable should be what is the desired state. So whether it should be enabled or disabled. So let's change it to base switchable actor. OK, let's make both variables exposed to uh, instance. This way, we will be able to modify it through condition query. And I'll also change category to settings. OK, so there are two major functions that we have to override in this object to make it work. And the first one is add observers. The second one would be remove observers. And the third one is actually the condition checking itself. So OK, in the first one, we have to check if actor is valid. And if it is, let's assign to event that we've made before. And pretty similarly, in removing observers, we have to unbind from this event. OK, so whenever a oh, switchable actor changes its state, I want to update condition. And this is event-driven uh, system, which is much more efficient than checking it on take or some timer. Uh, now let's implement this condition for fit. So first thing we need to check if actor is even valid, if we have set anything in there. If it's not, then there is nothing to check. Uh, we can assume that condition is fulfilled. But if it is, now let's check what is its what is his state. Okay, if it's enabled and our decide state is also true, 
and we can assume that the condition is fulfilled. Otherwise, it's not. And similarly, when switchable actor is not enabled, and on the side that is false, then this is true. And here, the condition is not fulfilled. Um, there are also a few other functions that you can implement. And you can check all how, how to set it up, an example of other conditions that are within the plugin. For example, action points. Here the code is commented. You can see everything, how to implement it and how to modify it. But OK, let's go back to our example. So this path point should be enabled only if those are open. So now let's edit our condition query. And let's add our newly added condition, which is check switchable actor. Let's select outdoors and let's say that the desired state must be enabled. We can also add description. OK, once it's done, AI won't be able to use this point as long as the doors are closed. So let's demonstrate it. So as you can see, he reached this point and he, go, he can't go any further. But if I press E as a player, the doors are opening and the point became enabled so he can pass through it. OK, now let's make AI to open doors by itself. So for that, we can use action point with action call function. So let's call function enable on the doors. And after he calls this function, let's make AI wait a couple of seconds. And also, we need to modify condition here because we don't want to execute this action point if the doors are already already open. So similarly as uh, this path point, we need to add condition, but this time checking whether the doors are closed. So let's use our condition. And desired state is false. So only then the condition will be fulfilled. OK, now let's connect. Uh, this path point with action point. Okay, and now when AI reaches this point, he should start this action, open the door by itself, and then go to the uh, second path point. OK, that's cool. Uh, let's add a bit more complexity to it. So let's say I want AI to execute this action point only when player will get close to, to that AI. For that, let's take any trigger or increase its size. OK, and now let's say that this action point will be enabled only if those are closed and if player is inside this trigger box. So let's modify our condition query. We can add a description here. OK, let's add another condition. And this time we can use already existing uh, condition, which is check play and volume. OK, so let's select our trigger. And let's say that player must overlap with it. OK, so now, now if I play the game, AI is waiting. When I enter that trigger volume, he starts this action point, opens the doors, and goes to the other side. So basically, that's all I wanted to show in this tutorial. Thanks for watching.